Oh, we're doing it? Yeah. Okay. Fine, we're all doing it. We're passing it down, starting with the person that got You want to start? All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, We've got a power lifter on today. We're One of the start, start the day off with some ammonia. One of the strongest motherfuckers actually in the world. So this is gonna be interesting. That's a flattering entrance. Let's go All right, so uh, I called this pneumonia last time. <laughs> yeah, people said bro people, said pneumonia. People in my <laughs> bro said pneumonia. Like, They're like, what the fuck is that? It's, it's ammonia. And I was like, I thought it was the same fucking thing. I'm gonna close my eyes this time. Yeah, close your eyes, bro. Start from a distance. Oh, he's going in. Oh, I felt it. Oh. <laughs> Strong start to the day. Why did he close his eyes? I don't understand. Oh, because it will. It. Bro had a coffee before this, too. In a fucking rain this morning. I'm 400 milligram deep. Good God. Dude, how do you do that? <coughs> I love it. <coughs> oh, my God. Do I have to do this? <coughs> It went up. Uh. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right, we're wired now. I fucking love oh, it. Oh, dude, I just blast guys- banged myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, we're all crying now. I've been pain, Fuck. bro, personally. No, you're not. You're I, I got right on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you took a double whiff. I took a one. I, I, like I was, my eyes I was are still bloodshot. The first time. I definitely <sighs> hit it the hardest. I don't. I don't usually bury my nose in it, bro. I, I just get a little bit and keep stay away from it, and like ease in. But y'all were burying your nose in it, so I was like, I. Right. No, no. I'm here bro, for this it. This fucking mic, it wasn't bro. That bad. Same thing as last week. It's just tilting. It's like a limp dick. Pause. Bro, just go look, motherfucker. Go like this. And ain't gonna stay. Fucking hold it. You're used to holding Johnny anyway. <laughs> fucking I walked into that one. That's good. <sighs> All right, but uh, we're here with well, Dawson. Good. We got a new guest today. Thank y'all for having me. Of course, bro. But, like, I was just telling him in church. I was like, I feel like I don't even really know anything about you. So, like, let's get, like, a brief, like, introduction <laughs> of, like, Dawson. Like, the whole, like, basic shit. Like, you're introducing... <sighs> Yourself to like your girl's parents or some shit. Who is Dawson? Yeah. My girl's parents. That, that's a hard explanation, bro. It's basically like when I talk to someone like right off the bat, I don't even really go into depth on who I am. It's like, hey, I lift weights. I tell people how to lift weights. I don't, I don't go much deeper than that. Um, training has been my life for about 11 years. I started training when I was like 14. I gave up like soccer, baseball, I played other sports. I did a little bit of jujitsu. Um, but lifting weights was my, my shit, so that's what I rocked with. I ended up going to college, dropped out because I wanted to pursue lifting weights. Then I ended up winning a national championship, got a scholarship offer, went to Nebraska. I was training with, like, some world champions there. It was pretty cool. Um, didn't want to be in school. I had my training business start when I was, like, 18, so I just kind of, like, rocked with that. And, yeah, man, that's been my whole life. That's been what I've been doing. Oh, yeah. And where are you from, like, originally? You know, like, I don't know any of that shit either. Do you know where Scranton is? It's like it's like an hour and a half from here, two hours from here. It sounds familiar. It's like it's like a cornfield. Like, the population is, like, 60 people. Like, people got chickens in their yards. They smoke, like, cigarettes in, like, the gas stations. It is just, like, just cornfields, bro. Like, you would drive through it, wouldn't even know you were there. Isn't Scranton in a TV show? Yeah, so it's in the office. Everyone's yeah. like, Scranton, it's Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's yeah. like, no, nah, bro, this is like, this isn't that big or well known. Like, no one, people that live like an hour away don't know it exists. You know, like, it's a, it's a little town. I figured it out. You did? Yeah. Bet. Go like this. Uh huh. You're going to go like that. All right. Bet. You're going to go tighten that. Tighten it? Oh. It's physics, bro. Bet. There you go. You know bet. what I'm Yeah, that's a bet. Yeah. Bro's an engineer. Bro is an engineer. So did you like start with like bodybuilding or just like lifting or did you go straight to like powerlifting? Do you know who Ziz is? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah there we go. <laughs> that, I, I watched that when I was like 14 and I was like, this guy is the coolest dude to ever exist. And so so that, that started the aesthetic era. And I, I like I went and I tried modeling when I was like 16. Like it was all about being like lean shredded basically I was starving myself at a young age um restricting calories and kind of wasting my time I remember I was like 170 pounds they're like yeah we you have like a bodybuilder look we want like a model look and I was like yeah this shit isn't for me hmm. um I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get yoked and then powerlifting is like hey you could eat whatever you want like train hard lift heavy and I like even in bodybuilding it's like progressive overload so I was doing heavy incline bench flat bench it, I just thought it was fun to simply put more on the bar it was just a very simple 
fun fun outlet for me. So I don't know, some random guy in the gym saw me training. His his name's Patrick Stroop. I'm um, still friends with him today. He like he was like, Hey, you should try powerlifting. I was like, Really? And he was like, Yeah, he gave me like a three XL singlet. I was like 195 pounds, so it f- it f- was it looked silly on me. How old were you at the time? Oh, fuck, seventeen. I was a senior Shit. in high school. Oh. Um, I was about to turn eighteen. And my first competition I did was November 2015, and I was 17 years old. Granted, I was training since I was 14, but but that was the first time I decided to actually compete. Um, and I totaled. 1400 i squatted 496 benched 353 and deadlifted 551 and it was like a i said like a bunch of like meaningless state records that i thought were a big deal it was like the teen two the teen three the junior um i won like best team with me i got like a, a bunch of gold trophies and at that point i was like i'm gonna be the best in the world at this like i thought it was just gonna be easy like i thought everything i signed up for was gonna Gonna, gonna just gonna fall into my hands basically like it was like this this was my destiny no one could stop me then like my next meet was like nationals and i went and i bombed out and looked like an idiot basically so then i was like oh it's not that easy yeah. like i gotta I, I gotta i got a lot to learn to to hang with the best at this so, so i was gonna ask like when did you realize that you were like strong as fuck but like you were strong as fuck when you first fucking started <sighs> but dude it, it, it's your perception of strength changes so much so people look at me and like i know like a normal person looks at me it's like you're strong as fuck but I've, i'm i'm around some my peers who like i think of dan grigsby who's deadlifting like a thousand pounds for reps who can you know this just casual he's like only like 30 <laughs> pounds bigger than me there's jamal browner there's shane hunt um Derek this away there's people that are way better than me that I'm around that I, I personally know and I see them as people so and, and it's like I look at it like I, I need to do more yeah so like the the feeling of like being strong as fuck there's kind of like a you know how bodybuilders get like body dysmorphia and they're like oh I'm, I'm small as fuck and he's like <laughs> like an absolute yeah. fucking unit it's like you ever hear the Dunning Kruger effect? Oh yeah, at the very very beginning, it's like the idiot. Then in the middle, it's like all oh, the scholars and everyone who's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah that's very real. Because that's how I was when I like first started. It's like you thought you were huge when you were like 150 fucking pounds, <sighs> dude. I thought I was so jacked at like 180, oh, at, like yeah. six foot. Well, you just think you know everything when you first start. Yeah. Like I, I, you couldn't have told me shit. Like you couldn't have told me shit. It's so scary when you become an adult <laughs> yeah. and you realize every adult knows nothing. Like, people look at me, he's like, you're so smart. And like, dude, I don't, you know, like, I, I know some things, but, like. All I know th- is that I truly know, know nothing. nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. like, there's, there's a lot that I don't know, and I'm, tr- I'm trying to learn, you know. Nah. It's like, the more that I do this, the more that I realize I don't know. The more I learn, you know the more I mean? stupid I realize I am. Yeah, like, I very, realize very that there's so much to learn that I'll always be. Like, There's not an expert at anything, bro, because mm-hmm. you can always fucking learn more. Even the people with the master's degrees and shit, man, I look at some of it, and it's like, it, may, it may, like when you don't know much, and you look at it, and you're like, oh, this person's like really, really qualified, and like you, you want to take their word, but there's some, some, a lot of them that just use it to peddle bullshit. You know what I mean? Like Dr. I, Joel Seedman. That's exactly who, that was the, <laughs> one of the first ones who yeah. came to mind. And there, there's a lot of people that push like great content, but they will also push some content that like, is all, I it's think, iffy, you know, bro. You, but like, but that's because no one really knows. Like the world of exercise science is very wishy washy. Well, that's, like, that's wh- just that's just what it is. We don't know much. That's why I'm a big fan of Joe Bennett because he's like, your goal as a coach, really. He says the only thing like is for me to really produce results on paper and try to follow like anatomy and science as much as I can. But it's really more so about what feels right for the person who's training as well. Mm-hmm. So like, re- what results? What produces results is really what is the right way to train. And that could be different for everybody, right? I would much rather find the dude that walked the walk instead of the guy that talked the talk. Yeah, exactly. It's just very simply, there's no other way to put it. You can you can get your degrees, you can use all the fancy words, but the people that I've talked to that like truly understood it, they, they spoke it to me like it wasn't above me. And it was like very very easy to understand. I think of Ed Cohn, he's probably the greatest powerlifter that ever lived. And like every every tip he ever gave me was so simple. It was like, hey, like stern them up, layman's turns. Like push with your feet, like that is it. It was so, so, you know, like he was talking to a child, mm-hmm. and like the child could understand. Like <clears throat> at that point, it's like, okay, this is how I need to. Because I used to like almost, 
don't want to say overcomplicate it, but you want to sound smart when you were talking to a client so they feel like they can trust you yeah. and like you so you so, so you know what you're talking about. But like I don't if I if I go to a mechanic, I don't really give a shit for him to explain everything he's doing for me to fix my just just fix my fucking car. Yeah. You know, so it's more so I'm just like, hey, this is this thing bad. Now it's good. Like oh, you oh, know, no like like that's what people want. They want you to do your job, not to like Well, do you want to tell somebody to duck their elbows thirty degrees or do you just want to say tuck your elbows a bit? I just, yeah, tuck your elbows, bend, bend it with your pinkies a hair. People undermine like simple cues. Well, it's because people can actually grasp it. And if you if you're trying to apply like fifteen different complex cues, you have so much going on in your head. Imagine trying to throw a baseball having fifteen different thoughts. That would you, suck. You you can't you, your aim's gonna be shit, your technique's gonna be shit, it's just gonna look like shit. But if you just kinda like mindlessly throw it, you know, like you just autopilot like well, it was like that one day when I was deadlifting, you were like you weren't like you weren't like just protract your scapula, like re- re- like do all this. You're just like relax your relax your arms, Very and pull. Relax yeah. your arms, just relax your arms. And I did that. And that's the the cue changed everything. That's the right? shit I told you when I first like started watching your fucking content when we first met was like I was I would watch your fucking videos and it's like you know fucking length and position forty six degrees this way this way that way and I'm like bro like I'm in this shit, like, I, I go to the gym consistently. I know a decent amount, and I have no idea what the fuck you're saying right now. So, like, how do you think, like, the average person is going to take that and, like, understand it? And then now you've gotten a lot better with, like... Just simple. Well, now simpler, I don't... Yeah. Dude, I used to write out my posts before I did them, like, because I, like, know what I'm talking about, but I'd want it to sound really smooth and, like, smart. Almost like a lab report. Like, mm-hmm. when you do a lab report, right? And, like, dude, who wants to... Only people, only a small, minute amount of people want to digest content like that, mm-hmm. right? And, like, it's also not going to help the population that I want to help because I want to train more like the ordinary hard gainer, right? Mm-hmm. And that person doesn't need to know all that. Again, it's like, am I going to tell him to adduct his elbows 30 to 45 degrees relative to his torso or just be like, dude, tuck your elbows a bit when you press? I think all that stuff does have a place. I mean, the, the idea of, like, hey, you can, like, bias your lats more or you can bias your upper back more with you know your elbow positioning like all, all those things are valid and it's not like it's, it's worthless information but if we're talking like majority of people like we, we walk into the gym and we look at majority of people that have trainers right do they need to be focusing on that no uh, what, what about like general population of america we walk we went to church today right like how many people in there do you think like exercised at all we were we were probably wrong. the percent of people in there that People don't exercise in America, so if, we, if, if we're trying to get those, if we're, if we're trying to get those people, in, like we like fifty percent of us are obese. So if we're like we we're we're the fucking fitness professionals, like as scary as that is. So it's kind of our job to like help that in my in my my eyes. So how how do we get these people into the gym? Is it, it, and I feel like when you're just like. I'm also a nerd for the science, for like the most length in position, the most optimal way to do things because I, I care about being the best and I want to hit every single detail. But majority of people can't even go for a fucking walk. They, they're eating fried food like three times a day. They've never been in a gym. It's like, hey, why don't we just you know go to the gym, get on the treadmill and do like some goblet squat, even if it's like a bullshit workout. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not trying to say it's better, better, it's better than no workout. It's Something start. is better than nothing. You know, like, like I, I, there, yeah, exactly. And it, you like start small and it can turn into something pretty good in like a short period of time and the thing is like especially if like this you if they have someone help them because a lot of people that go to the gym they never see progress and you know it it sucks like why would i keep going why why am i gonna put my money and my time towards this but if you like usually when someone like hires someone like competent or like they have like a friend help them or teach them and they see progress that is when they get hooked and then one person gets hooked and it kind of i mean I'm, i'm sure you like spreads yeah no, exactly. Literally. I've I've had a, I've gotten so many people into lifting weights, and that's and I know they've gotten other people into lifting weights, and it's like a ripple effect. My homie Colin Floyd like eat, sleeps, and breathes the shit that we do. He just lives in Colombia because when I started doing this shit, he was my workout partner. Mm-hmm. So it just it's contagious as fuck, bro. And that motherfucker used to be in the gym with me when we start. He'd be like, "How many more do we have left?" Like mm. that motherfucker. Yeah, I'd be like, "Bro, you can leave right now if you're done." And then he'd stay every time, right? So it is contagious, like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? What is your opinion on, like, having, for a client, I just love this question, just focusing on training and not nutrition, do you think they're going to make progress? So <laughs> let's let's say they don't train their they they don't change their nutrition at all. Like I have this overweight client who came to me, um, and they don't change their nutrition at all. If they go to the gym and they start exercising, they're going to build some muscle. 
their metabolic rate is going to go up as a result. And their, their bones are going to get stronger. There's still a ton of benefits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like well, what if, what if I eat healthy and I don't go to the gym? I mean, it doesn't negate eating healthy, but you're not going to get jacked. You're not going to be, you know, as resilient as someone who, who trained. But, you, you like, I mean, majority of powerlifters eat, like, complete trash. Yeah. And, you know, they still get benefits from from the training they do. Where, where a lot of people think it's like, oh, oh like, I can't, I can't start training yet. My nutrition isn't 100% dialed in. My nutrition isn't 100% dialed in all the time. I mean, is anyone's? Really? I, I mean, Wayne's, like, one of the biggest people we ever see, and he's in the gym eating Chick-fil-A sometimes. Everyone's human. Well, yeah, uh, I do that shit. I'm saying, like, if you have a client coming to you and they're like, my goal is to lose weight, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, but I do not want to change my eating habits. Yeah, that's 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 it's like, dude, do, do, do you want to change or not? It's manage expectations. Yeah, at that yeah, point. Ch- change change requires change, and it's not comfortable. It's usually painful. That's like the fucking definition of like the average American. I want to lose weight, but I don't want to change my diet. <laughs> and then, like, and then the there's fuck? a motherfucker that's like. <laughs> And then there's a motherfucker that's like, here, take this supplement, take this pill. There's ads on the TV. It's like, if you take this, you know, it's my, just every- my, my Uber driver in New York. And he, I told him, we just got in a conversation. I was like, do I do this, that, and the third. And he was like, so if I take protein shakes, like yeah. one or two a day, he's like, that'll, that'll do it. Right. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to try to explain this as easy as possible. I was like, dude, you have like a maintenance calorie mark. Hypothetically, let's say that's 2,600 calories. A day. If you want to build muscle and lose fat, eat in a minor deficit of that, like 2,200, 2,300 calories a day. Mm-hmm. You need to track. Doesn't really matter what you eat at this point. I was like, eat what you want. But the nutrition label on the back tells you everything you need to know. Mm-hmm. He was like, no, so the protein shakes aren't good. I was like, fuck. I don't even drink protein <laughs> shakes, bro. Like, very, very <laughs> seldom. Yeah, like, it's like, well, fuck. Um, yeah, they're okay, but like, it's all about overall like what your intake protein is, right? intake is yeah but the, the, everyone I, I remember when i first started i thought protein shakes were like the magic oh, secret do you, you ever do serious thing, mass oh dude i took the mass bro, scanners i've taken bro. them all just, they taste terrible they destroy your stomach they ruin your blender bottles like bro <laughs> just just blend up oatmeal with milk and like like use some fair life you'll have plenty of protein it won't be as disruptive to your gut like that stuff's just been marketed so long and it's like real food is always better like if you need yeah. it I thought serious mass was like test, bro. When I first started, dude, yeah, I, I thought, was like, you couldn't have told me different. I was like, dude, you have to get. This I'm gonna look like Jay Cutler, yeah, bro. Like, like, yeah, after after I drink this, the scoop is this protein, big, bro. Drink. It's this big, and yeah, it's dude, two it, scoops, bro. For you serious mass, you couldn't even put it in a blender. But one scoop wouldn't fit in the blender bottle. <laughs> no, I know. So you'd have to make like three shakes with it. It was dude, so pointless. <laughs> I my dad had this huge blender in his gym. I was like this big because he'd make like like four or five people shakes it sometimes, bro. So I'd make it in there. It'd be like five or six red solo cups of just like goop bro oh. you like sitting there like chugging it i'm like i'm gonna be huge dude I'm, like, <laughs> I, I, I gave that up at a certain point i just started going to mcdonald's to get like a 40 piece mcnugget when for like eight dollars when that was a thing you used to eat like half a jar of peanut butter when i was like 12 I, I, I didn't eat peanut butter for years for that reason just because i like ate myself sick of there's so many foods I, I didn't touch for like prolonged periods speaking of uh shit food i, I had a thought like the other day where, like, I think a lot of influencers now are almost, like, they're taking the whole balance shit, like, very far. Like, I see kids that post up on their story. Like, there's a difference between, like, doing it and then, like, these people post it, too. Where they're going out drinking almost, like, every weekend at the club and shit. And then you see them during the week, like, eating fast food and literally, like, posting on their story, like, consistently. And it's like, you're a fucking fitness influencer. Like, I-, I think you should act like it. And you got, like, hundreds of thousands of followers that, like you can easily influence, you know what I'm saying? Well, so I mean, it's like, I think there's like a... Especially if you're enhanced. Well, they're in it for the wrong reasons. They're not in it. I think there might be in it for, especially those people that I think I know who you're talking about. Like, they're in it for their own self-interest and uh, their own clout, right? They don't really want to help people. They just want to, want the sponsorships and want the, the attention like a celebrity because the, the, the fitness influencer is like the new celebrity of... Uh, that was funny. Uh, of uh like these social media like it went from like tiktokers you know there's like really famous tiktokers now like fitness influencers are like blowing up even more and they're going to continue to do so the trend started the whole mcdonald's thing bro that's Dude, what you were talking like, about that's so, yeah well, not, not even him it, but a, a bunch of people yeah doing. a bunch of people now bro. there's a like, time and place for it though like so when i was but like i got permission from my coach when i just went and stayed with goob i was like i i was like dude i'm on instacart the first day see i Go to places prepared to be on plan, right? Mm. So I went there and I was like, had shit in the Instacart. He was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm ordering food here. Like, so I can get my meals before I eat out. He's like, dude, you're in New York. He's like, just 
for three days. Eat. It's okay. Some eat some food. That, that, that's a good coat. Yeah. I was like, bet, you know, like I'll enjoy it. But there's a time and place. The first day I came back was the first thing I did when I came here. Had a meal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, that's a, that's it's smart. not what you do all the time. It's what you do most of the time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's not about being 100% consistent. It's it's just, you know. One healthy over, meal overall. doesn't one healthy meal doesn't make yeah. you and one bad meal doesn't, doesn't break, break you. you. you exactly. Know what I mean? Like. I mean, you, you saw the fucking, actually, I don't even know, I think I only posted one YouTube video, but we're in Houston, we fucking go to the grocery store, we get, I literally was eating, like, the same shit I would eat. We usually. just had bagels, usually. That's the thing we usually didn't have, was, like, a treat. We were like, yeah, alright, we'll like, have bagels with, like, peanut butter. Cause it's for like breakfast a, with eggs. More of a dirtier carb. Yeah. Because I usually have, like, oats in the morning. Like, everything's fucking on point well, if I go a anywhere. dirty. What's so dirty about bagels? Bro? He looked I at me like he was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just like have this thing with bread because, dude, I'll just overeat. It bread. is hard to digest. I feel you. If you eat too much of it, of course. I just you know. love bread, bro. I love it too. It's bro. so fucking good. I try to avoid it. Can stick yeah. more to like rice. Bread and pasta. Well, that's because I don't do pasta anymore either, just because it bloats me so much. Well, it, the amount of calories you guys are pushing, like, there's no point of eating that. It like becomes like more of a digestive issue than. Well, you can't get else. all your food in. At exactly. forty seven hundred so. calories, I'm like. Yeah, there's no point if no, you're. Thank you. If it's it's good, it's a good satiating food. Favorite bread. Right. Oh. Pumpernickel's really good, bro. What brand though? There's a lot of. Different I don't brands. know. There's a cinnamon raisin bread, honestly. Fucking that's cinnamon pretty, that's pretty top tier, but I, I don't know. That is top tier. I don't know if I would say that's my favorite bread, though, bro. I'm, I'm going to say the fucking, where was it? Is it Texas Roadhouse? The, yeah, the, the, oh, yeah, the fucking yeah, brown yeah, bread yeah. that you get with the butter. Yeah, exactly. Dude, yeah, yeah. yeah that shit is dank as fuck, yeah. Any of, those, any of those fucking rolls, bro. I, I can't one-up that. I'm going to say like Ezekiel bread that's like cinnamon. Yeah, you sound, I get out of here, right? I can one-up it. I'm, I'm, I'm one-up <laughs> it for go sure. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, you got it. You go first. I uh, said it. Ezekiel bread with like cinnamon. Ra- it's something I eat all the time. And I like Ezekiel it. bread, bro. bro. Come on. Greatest. Not a chant. Greatest bread. The green bread. The green bread. The green bread. Oh, money. Yeah. Oh, well, her- Hawaiian rolls. I don't know, bro. That's kind of Hawaiian what, rolls. That's what kind of Texas Roadhouse rolls are, kind of, probably. Oh, bro. Mm. Fuck. That shit's really, really good. It's absurd. <laughs> oh. It's more the butter than anything, bro. It's yeah, dude, the butter is so fucking good. Yeah, that shit's funny. Mm. Uh, the fucking, uh, what is it? Like, fucking apple. Not apple. It's like cinnamon. I think it is apple something. The the butter that they use. It's, a, it's They call it something. Do they have that at Longhorn? No. Longhorn, they have. That the chicken we got from Longhorn was mad good, though, honestly. Y'all got chicken, chicken yeah. at Longhorn? When yeah, we were in the airport. airport, bro, we got chicken and rice and veggies. Bro. You, you go to a steakhouse and get chicken? Absolutely. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> he said that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to Longhorn, get the uh, the palm-crusted chicken without the palm crust, mm-hmm. and then you got grilled chicken, and it's fire. Without the palm crust. I used to work fun. there. It was cheaper than the steak, bro. They wanted a lot of money for the steak. And it was oh, at the yeah. airport. I was like, this motherfucker, they ain't got no chef back here. This motherfucker ain't going to cook my steak. Right? Uh, dude, I just hate airports in general. I actually it- love traveling. I like traveling. I, just, I, I hate the airport. I do part. not like turbulence. I'm a pussy about really? that. Oh, dude. I was always that thinking bad. I'm I was telling him fucking on the thing. plane last time. I was like, bro, if this is how we're going out, this is how I'm meant to go out, and I don't go fuck. So fuck the, the turbulence, whatever. I don't go fuck. He's over here stressing. That would be such like, a yeah. shitty way to go out, bro. So y'all flying spirit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I <laughs> make this. Delta. Well, the, what, the first time we went to Houston, I was like, yeah, yeah, nah. Not anymore, bro. But like, what the fuck is the difference between that Delta flight and that Spirit flight? Other than the fact that I you feel get like the Spirit shit. planes are like the hand-me-down planes. You know what I mean? They're, They're all getting- the look. I talked to fucking Logan. Logan literally works on the planes. He said all the planes are the fucking same. It's just a different fucking logo on there, bro. That well, dude. I just I'm a, I'm gonna talk to Logan and be like, y'all motherfuckers be doing your job down there on that plane. Cause if not, bro, I fly I Spirit. Get on and I feel like I'm gonna die. I feel yeah. like it's different. I don't, I don't know. know. Bro. And, and Spirit, they charge you. They charge you for your bags. I think like American and, and maybe Delta. Usually, I think you get Delta's like one the carry best. on. You get a free you think carry Delta's on, on those. Yeah. Allegiant. Yeah. I love yeah. Delta. Delta. I, I give I you free Allegiant. shit too, like a free water and coffee. The cookies, yeah. the Bischoff cookies, bro. Them bitches is dang. I, I usually turn those down, bro. Yeah, I never. I didn't get them. What? Did you get? Or you orthoxic motherfucker? Um, what? Y'all you have ever, orthoxia a little bit. Y'all ever what been updated that? to f- like uh, first class for free? No, no, oh, dude, wish. I've had that happen. I've, like I've gotten it once going to Spain, and it was really fucking nice. Spain, that's, too, that's a long flight. Yeah, that's a flight. It's like six, seven hour flight. Why do you get it? 
Because we just asked for it, and I was like, oh, we have extra room. Uh, they're expensive, and it's like they need to fill the spot because like, I think it's like... The weight balance in the airplane. No, <laughs> that's fucking bullshit. I think it's like... They no, that's a, actually a fucking thing, bro. Yeah, but the first, the first f- from first class from where we were sitting didn't make much of a difference. We we asked, and they gave us an upgrade for like a little bit more because they need to like fill the, speeds, the seats for like some sort of like quota or something like that um, th- to not look short because then they could like take away... First class or some bullshit. It was some weird shit. Like, I, I never heard of it before. The most bullshit um, part about traveling is, like, if you have, like, two suitcases and one's, like, 40 pounds and the other's, like, 46. They won't to, let you, yeah. And you got to, like, take something out of the 46 one to put in the other suitcase when they go in the same plane. If that is, like, well, the, the weight balance, like, if that's true, why aren't you weighing people? Yeah. Like, well, why don't you put these fat asses on a scale? Yeah. Why, why am I sitting next to this dude who's 400 pounds when I'm 250? Like, this this is not it. Like, this, that is not a valid. Like, t- t- tell me that's not valid. Like, that's fucking valid ever, as shit, bro. You ever see the video of the family getting their clothes out and, like, putting all the sweatshirts on and stuff like that so they can make weight? And they're, like, walking in the fucking airplane, like, with, like, Three layers of clothes. Well, each, dude, on the last but it's fucking like the same weight. On the last flight back from New York, it was the smallest plane I ever been on in my life, and there are two four hundred pound women on the front. You can't tell me that's not going to tip the balance a little bit. I'm not trying to be rude, bro, but that's honest. <laughs> well, the the planes now they're like, desi- they're just where you left. They're designing <laughs> they're designing planes to like accommodate more people, so they're making the seats really cheap and small. But it's like people aren't that small anymore, especially like, in America. Bro. Like holy shit, I'm like, not make dude. Bro. I'm not making fun of fat people, but like it's not healthy to be 400 pounds. Like it's not making and, fun and of just them. just it's it it's a very big fact that they were like 400 pounds. It's well, just that, a fact. The, when you fucking book your flight, you're not the to- Put your fucking weight in there probably soon. Bro. Dude, what I used to do, and I would, I think I flew alone one time, and, like, I would, I was, I waited until they, like, called my name, like, outside in the terminal, so that, like, I would go in, I was the last one, right, and I could sit wherever the fuck I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I would always sit, like, somewhere where I wouldn't have to sit next to anybody. Wait, you'd be, you'd wait to be the last one to get on the plane, too? Yep. I, I would do that same thing and try to snag first class, but sometimes they'd move my ass, bro. It depends on, mm-hmm. uh, on the plane, though, because we had, all of our flights were fucking completely, like, jam-packed when we went mm-hmm. to, uh, to Houston and back. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, right? I don't know. What the fuck are y'all doing, bro? He's trying to fucking <laughs> oh, kill me. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. He fucking... Try to make me flinch. Yo, Ruben, I uh, got a haircut, by the way. It looks pretty suave. Does everyone like, like it? it? Very handsome. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Dawson. <laughs> he told me, he said this first. He was like, dude, I kind of look like a lesbian with my hat on backwards with the really long hair. <laughs> so I changed, his, in the, in the I changed his contact to Dyke until he cut his hair. <laughs> Solid. Was that why you cut your hair? No. I, I cut, <laughs> Bullied I li- Ruben into cutting his so hair. I, like to, I would have assisted. No. <laughs> I didn't get the Hold him down. <laughs> no, I like, to cut, I like to grow up my hair, and then I like to donate it. But I get to a point where it needs to be cut, but I grow so attached to it where I don't want to cut it. Because you you so I've grown it. To grow it's it. Two, yeah. two and a half years, three years of growing it. And it's like, but then it was getting nappy, and then he calls me out on it. And I'm like, fuck. And it's like getting in my mouth. I recently got a puppy and she's biting it and it's pissing me off. I was like, I'm cutting this fucking hair. Well, I will say this. If you want, if you're making content, like, the more cleaned and cut you look, like, if you want your content to be successful, probably that helps a little bit, right? Yeah, but that's what I was. I'm just saying it's a fact. We'll see. We'll see how today's video does. I was even doing my, uh, the fucking taxes. And I was just, anything that was, like, had to do with my personal appearance is a fucking write-off. Because that all goes into my fucking, my brand. And if I look better, then I will make more money and shit. I got to write off that truck. Oh, yeah. The whole entire truck. $38,000. I I, I didn't even I'm going to write off that cold plunge I got. Bro, dude, write off your 400 you got. Mm. That, like, again, I was like, dude, I one, the only place I drive to is the gym. And I have to fucking do that. I I send my accountant the miles to the gym. So if I if it's X amount of miles, I go f- six days a week. Yo. that's how much gas I can write off a year. I, uh, Are you allowed to do that though? If you're yeah. using it to like yep. tra- travel to Any, other places as well, though, I thought you need like two I, vehicles. I only write off the gas to like to the gym. Mm-hmm. Now that vehicle, it like I've posted it on social media. It's like oh, uh, like I got this car because of coaching and social media and stuff. So right there, it's. Like showing people that it's successful, I'm putting it on my social media. It can be accounted towards that. My uh, my accountant mm-hmm. showed me an app called Mile IQ mm-hmm. that tracks everywhere you go, and then you can mark it as personal or business. Mm. What is it called? Mile IQ. That's I need to get that. That's That's I'm so downloading close. it right now because I'll forget. Yeah. So whenever you go somewhere, this is not an ad, by the way. 
Maybe maybe it could be <laughs> mile IQ. Mile IQ. So like you fucking uh, whenever you drive, it tracks it, and then you can just you swipe for personal or business. Bet. Pretty cool. That's bet. But like I, when I go to school, I count it as business because there's a gym out there, and I go to that gym sometimes. But I don't know. <laughs> Arms are looking pretty big, bro. Thanks, dog. That's my only only muscle I got going for me. Not I the shoulders right now, though. and the legs. Not the shoulders. Ben has a new code. Um, it's small shoulders Ben. S M A L L small shoulders Ben. Um, I uh, I also haven't told you yet because I want I kind of want to not show you until you see it in person. But I'm getting a new car. In my, we already have it. Let's my, go. They bought it in Jersey. Let's and go. My, my mom or my dad is driving it down, and it's so fucking clean. What'd you get? Let's it's go. not a Tesla. It's not a Tesla. Let's or, go. But I don't even. I don't want to say nothing about it until it comes here. Let's go. It's, it's Let's fire. Go. Let's go. It's fucking dope. I'm cool. this close to buying a Tesla because I can afford the payments. Did you just buy a new car? Yeah, bro. But I like the truck is like. Why and I need to truck? put tires on it. Honestly, the, the maintenance on a Tesla just seems like such a bitch, dude. There is none. That's that's the problem. That's why I wouldn't get one. Really? Uh, well, it seems well, if you have like a problem, you can't just take it to a normal dealership yeah. and have it worked on. You got to get like a Tesla employee to come to you, and it could be like a very very small thing, but you're gonna be waiting a very very long time. Like if you just have to more, fix my car. Yeah. yeah, if you have like two cars, I think it's cool if you if you want to do that. But I, I just I don't know. I just really want I, a Tesla. My my perspective on cars is very different. My my parents own a car lot. Um, they own they, they in Florence and like I've had like this is the first car I've ever bought, but I probably had like thirty cars before this, and they weren't always nice. Like like my first one, I was like in a little shitty Scion TC, you know, like a drug dealer. I got pulled just from how sketchy it looked. I drove you a know? Buick Buick Regal two thousand three after I totaled two cars in high school because I was a fucking jackass. I've totaled many cars, bro. <laughs> Gang. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Can't Sorry. relate. Can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's better, bro. Your insurance will thank you. I can yeah. drive. My insurance oh my is three hundred something dollars. That's a month. nuts, dude. I'm paying like fucking seventy five, man. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Well, don't total any cars. Well, I'm tw- once you pass twenty five, knock like, on some wood, pay. like right now. No, I'm all right. I'm a responsible all right, driver. Man. That's uh, fine. Yeah. Maybe down here. I don't know. People drive like assholes down here. You think people drive like assholes here? Oh, they're so Absolutely. bad here, man. Or they're like way too Holy fucking slow. Holy crap, Dude, too I, slow. I, I'm so, like, northerners drive like assholes way more, bro. I people, like people probably like think I drive like an here. asshole because I drive. You just cut people off and shit? I'm trying to go. But people, I got places to be, bro. People are very easygoing, slow. Like, I'll just get, I'll stay in the left lane. It's okay. It's like, no, move, motherfucker. Like, go to the right. Shoot the so fucking gap. Yeah. I have like a zippy, <laughs> I have a small little zippy car. So. I'd be saying that shit in my car. I'm like, shoot, you see the fucking gap? <laughs> shoot the fucking gap. <laughs> I get upset, bro. It's not I just cool. don't, when I'm driving, it's just like I feel like people don't even have fucking common sense or they don't have that fucking inner dialogue that we were talking about in their fucking head. Where like if I'm on your ass in the left lane and you're going fucking 60 in a 65 and you're going to fucking sit there, like, what are, like what's going through your head? You can fucking see me. I'm like over to the left, like in your fucking mirror. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like, move the fuck over. I'm trying to break the law for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord Fucking shit Y'all wanna talk about church today? Yeah This is your second time? This was my second time at um, New Spring I've I've been probably to New Spring probably Two other times Like numerous years ago But this was like My second time in a while Probably yeah. since How do you 2019 like it? We got a whole crew We got a whole gang at church now It's mm-hmm. awesome I like I the it. community it, it, it was wholesome vibes Um, Music's cool I, I like the message more than anything. Yeah, you know, I like the message more last week than this week, but it was, it was still wholesome. It, it's cool just to see so many people just like singing, dancing, just happy to be there, happy to be alive. You know, just, I, 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 don't, I don't really know what else to. It's almost, it's no, almost, sure. ref, it's almost refreshing because it's like we're three years into this, yeah. like restarting almost. Like mm. I don't know how it was down here, but up in the northeast it was like really crappy. Everything was shut down. Especially it being such a busy time, like busy place that I lived, and you probably lived in a busy area too, right? Where in Jersey? COVID. I was COVID. here in 2020 uh, when like COVID like hit. I kind of I moved here like kind of in the uh, middle of it. Could you train? Here, yes. The gyms open like a lot earlier than they did in Jersey, but uh, they shut down in Jersey, and I was training in my basement for a while. They have. I'm lucky. My parents own that gym in Polly, so I built a gym. Yeah, I, I just had a key to my parents' gym. And again, we just like, they were like, you can only have four people per whatever square footage in a place. So I would just bring like three homies to work out. I, I ran a gym and we have a 5,000 square 
foot place, and we like did it in secret. Like it was like almost like how it was in like the uh, Roaring Twenties with like uh, alcohol and like the uh, what are those bars called? Speakeasies. Speakeasies. So you have to come in. Like neighbors would call the cops on us. It was be it's it was fucking terrible time. Imagine to be being there. a person doing that. Fucking that. nuts. Like we're Going trying to, to be healthy. Somebody's trying to be healthy. In, in a time of sickness. And, and luckily, like, uh, the owner was, uh, he's a police officer, so he knows a lot of people in the state, county, and stuff. And they're like, hey, you're getting uh, 82 calls in, like, three weeks of, like, people, like, calling, like, to complain, like, during COVID. And this is, like, the time. We couldn't stay shut down anymore. So, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty sense. What's, what's up? We could do questions. Oh, cool. No, we didn't even talk about the message. Message right, was we'll hard. Talk, the talk message was it. hard today. Tell them, tell them what's up. The, what was it? Do you remember the question? Because that's, I think, the most important takeaway out of uh, who is Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, 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 not that question. I just wanted to end. say, uh, shout out the girl who who was on the left uh, at church. You are so fine. You know exactly who I'm talking. about. <laughs> I know exactly who you're th- talking about. I know I'm talking ears. about. I know you're talking Plug about your too. Ears. Plug your ears. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know you're talking about exactly who I'm talking about. Yeah. Shout out you. <laughs> Right. So we I went to sign that, bro. So we went to, <laughs> we'll see, that. we 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 kept that to ourselves, but we let that out. No, I, I'm just you're very open, you know. Alistair's trying so hard not to co-sign, bro. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. I'm she's kidding. I'm kidding. She's pretty fun. Yeah, fun. She's fine. Fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? The one on the left, the far left. The one on the very far left. The, the, the one new. that's not normally I think she's there. She's new. She was a new one. <laughs> Who are you geeking, bro? I thought this was just hilarious. It's like we all know, and like she has no idea. And they have fun. no idea either, probably. They don't so. at all. That's okay. All right, first question. The message. We, the message. Yeah, oh, the bro. message. What was Jesus the question? Christ, you remember the, man. Like, that's what say it. That's Why what don't we're you say it? Why don't you say I'm it? I'm asking you. I don't know it. What you mean? Like the question was, would you do what Jesus do? Like that was like the at the at the very end. He did it for us in your in your position. Would you do what he does when in your suffering? Something like oh, that. The well, suffering. Dude, would you handle your, your suffering like I, Jesus? Basically. Yeah. Would you handle your suffering like Jesus? I don't That's think. A hard question. I don't believe in coincidence. It was Judd's birthday mm. last week. He turned twenty six years old, and I prayed that day. I was like, you know, I don't know why I'm still alive, even though my like fucking drug use was so much worse than all my friends that died. And I was like, for whatever reason you chose me, like, thank you. Because I know, like, everything I've been through and all that terrible shit just isn't for no reason. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Because when you learn that your suffering, like, is not outweighed by the good that it can do from the glory that you've been given when you walk with God, then, like, you have freedom from that because you're only an acquaintance to your suffering. It's not a friend to you. Right. It's not a part of you. It's an acquaintance. Nothing more. I still had a, I, I'm still having a hard time with today's message. Just like I have to think about it a little bit more, you know. And I just don't believe. Well, dude, I think it's easier to ref like resonate with that when you've been through some really traumatic shit. Yeah, exactly. Because I had like, dude, if I couldn't believe that, like, again, you know, I'm about to cry. Like right now, like, dude, it just fucks me up. Mm-hmm. Like losing friends, bro. Yeah. Like, I almost cried in today's message too. Yeah, because like, bro, like all the terrible shit you've been through like if you've been through a lot of shit especially if you're like i'll venture to say i'm like mildly bipolar probably mm-hmm. you know what i mean so like <laughs> mildly like you know <laughs> but you know so it's like i truly believe that like i have been able to overcome all the shit that i've been through drug use like suicide fucking depression shit like that like and it's not for no reason and that's why i'm so open about talking about it because like the greatest thing that I get, like when you say you get messages that like you inspire others and like help them move forward. Like the best thing for me is when somebody messages me and it's like, dude, like I've been sober for a couple of months or like I seriously struggle with suicide and like watching your videos has helped me like pursue just trying to get over that and be a better person and like be happier. Like that's powerful, bro. You possibly save somebody's life, right? Yeah. Like, and that's what means everything to me. They're probably saving yours, bro. Oh, they, yeah, bro. Because mm. I don't see myself that way. You okay. know what I mean? Like, I do not. I read those messages and I don't believe it's, it's it. It's very easy to sweep them under the rug. But then when you get a very negative one, it's very easy to believe every word they say when those motherfuckers don't know who you are at all. Exactly, bro. Well, they only see what you post, not who you are and how you treat people and, like, who you actually, like, what you actually stand for, right? Mm-hmm. You only get a very minute moment of me in a 60-second f- reel. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's why I try to be as authentic as possible. You know what I mean. So at least mm-hmm. you get 
a pretty real 60 fucking seconds, right? That's why when people leave, like, the shit comments or they talk about whatever, it's just like, I'm doing me, and if you don't like it, like, you know, you don't have to watch me. You know what I'm saying? So That's, like, why, that's why I troll all those Justin, people. Justin, we were gaming the other day, was like, any comment, good or bad, just boost algo. So, like, fuck yeah. it. That's well, why. Yeah. That's why I comment. Thank you on for your, the engagement. Yeah. Yep. Fuck it. That's why I comment on on his stuff all the time. I'm like, nah, like some troll stuff, and it like people that respond back, and it's like all of a sudden, 82 messages turn into like 120, like that, and it's just like fuck it. Like people I'm, love, if you can get people to argue, yeah, bro, they will sit there all nice. day. Like the one, my favorite one, I people did to one, for a one one time. And this is how you know people don't know you or follow you because they don't know I'm friends with you. So I said, nah, man, he says he's natty all the time. <laughs> like, and I trolled the fuck out of like five different people and they were getting mad. Like, nah, dude, you are you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, I'm like, nah, he said, he, he promised us. He said it was one of his last posts. And I'm like, all right. And then one kid commented something stupid and then I flipped it on him. Uh, like I, You're like, I guess sarcasm is not displayed yeah, well through yeah. Instagram. <laughs> it was just real that. funny. Ugh. I don't even fucking know. So the the message was suffering, and how you deal with it, and you got to deal with it in a. Uh, <laughs> you got to you got to you got to look way. to look at your pain in a way where it's not like, oh my god, like life hates me, the world hates me, this is over. Like, what is this teaching me? Yeah, right. and how could I turn this into something positive? Mm-hmm. Like, because if you again said on the last pod, if you can overcome pain and teach other people how to be free from that potentially. Well, there you go. Yeah, I man. think I put it pretty good. That's he, your gift he, to the world. <laughs> he goes like in depth and then gets emotional, and I'm just like, yeah, that's like the summary of the of the shit. It's the suffering in the <laughs> uh, yeah, how you deal the with the suffering in the yeah. That was like a yep. half run on yeah. sentence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Your writing mechanics are terrible. Yeah, failure. My what? Writing. It's My okay, man. Mechanics. You're everything. <laughs> okay. First question. What's Hemi, up? Hemi, Hemi Hemi Neutron. Uh, yeah. right, let me let me pick Hemi the Turner let me pick questions out. Because you go through them and you're like, eh, let me let me be an uh, objective. I have a good you one. You talked shit right, on right, me right, for fine. chewing gum that one time, and you chewing gum in the mic because I can't hear it. He can hear it. That's why you he can said hear something. It? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Well, <laughs> swallow it. Bro. Actually, that's Whoa. crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's wild. Um, the importance of deloads because uh, I don't believe in them. Really? No, I'm playing. Are you fucking kidding? I'm, I'm just gonna act like I don't believe here, in them right now. Okay. I think there's two. There's two. Sometimes you don't need to do deload depending on your training. If you train for like I say maybe longevity and you're like you do it just to train to be healthy, you don't really need to take a deload. But if you're hammering your body every four to six weeks, should you should kind of come off, come back a little bit to reset. So that your body can actually like recover from that, just like how rest days, uh, you recover, you just prolong that recovery for a little long. Sometimes deloads take two weeks. Depends on the training. It de- it's like solely dependent on what, what you like. I'm sure. What are your deloads? I was like, gonna say. Uh, let's ask the power yeah. lifter. So, it, my my take on this is, if you don't need deloads, you aren't fucking training hard enough. Mm-hmm. By the time I need a deload, my knees are destroyed, my mm-hmm. back's destroyed, my body my, hurts. My, my will to train is non-existent. I do not want to go to the gym. I do not want to be around people. I'm irritable. I don't even want to eat my next meal. You know what I mean? Like I I am I am beat to shit. I my hands hurt. My sh- my shins are probably scarred up. Feet hurt. Like, like what I want to do is I want to go lay on the couch next to a fireplace and take a nap and cuddle a dog. You know what I mean? Or go for a walk outside. Fucking read a book. Well, even though like my like it training is my favorite thing in the world. I, I love going balls to the wall. I don't like having to take off days. I don't like having to take deloads. But I started taking them every fourth week. Mm-hmm. And what what that started doing is that started making well, I started making more progress. Couldn't be doing that because I used to just like train six days a week. There was a point in time I would do eight hour days. I would do like 10 sets on squat, bench, deadlift on a Saturday, go home, eat, shower, cry in the shower, go back to the gym. And then I would do like probably like 10 to 15 sets of like accessories, GHR, plank, ab wheel, a bunch of shit. And dude, I made more progress. That, that was like the prep I did for Ghost before the american pro and the american pro i bought an xbox i learned to sit on my ass i learned to not go to the gym and let that like excitement build yeah you know and to to allow myself to recover from the destruction i was putting myself through and then i had i had a better meet and got i made more progress and probably strength and gaining body weight training less sitting around more which was very hard to do for me as a person because i don't do much else 
um, compared to killing myself for eight hours a day because it's like more is not always better. And that that's something it's like you, you kind of just like have to be confident in what you're doing and go hard enough when you're going hard that you're confident. Like when I'm taking the deal, it's like, oh, thank God. Two days on, one day off changed my life. Is it that that's a good way. That split. Well, bodybuilding's just like the deals are a little different. So mine's like every eight weeks because mm-hmm. I don't tax my CNS as hard as you. I was do. gonna say that you know if you like take more rest days consistently, you'd probably say that you don't need to take a deload as. Well, frequently. dude, it's different for him if he's. You got to think as the central nervous system fatigue at squatting six hundred something fucking pounds, like every week building up to seven hundred pounds or what, mm-hmm. like whatever is so much higher than us squatting just 405 for even six to eight reps so i'm saying so there's some truth to that but at the same time like your one rep max is your one rep max like and if you hit like a set of like i watch y'all train to failure that's that's pretty fucking taxing it's pretty comparable if i went to failure and depends on what i'm going to failure on now if i hit failure on like a one rep max squat or even if i'm like anywhere close to it it's gonna hurt pretty bad yeah but you'll do that for like a month you'll do like your presses and then go rep the fucking 120 pound dumbbells for like 30 reps yeah but i'm not really getting sore from those benching doesn't really destroy you but like heavy squats and heavy deadlifts will like they 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 tax your brain and your soul my dad i just started doing the like you i did it our split i put two pull days so we have pull a pull b Mm -hmm. so i'm deadlifting every other week instead of every week i feel like i'm gonna get stronger i think that's smart or if you do deadlift every week do like one one week light one week heavy Mm -hmm. well one week's sldls and then the next those mm -hmm. will be a little lighter like hamstring accessory it it also considers what you like in terms of like it's like hey like what what is the deload what does it do there's numerous ways to deload like we were talking like say i could keep my intensity very very high but i'm doing 50 percent of the work that that is a deload it, or i could like do a lot of the work and drop down the intensity like a, a ton and that'd be a deload but you, usually like you want to drop down on both and i feel like it's something a lot of people don't do because a lot of people want to go to the gym they don't like especially you make your whole life revolve around understand want to spend the time there but i feel like it's something that's very Crucial. underappreciated because it's like all right let, let's say you have a line here right like every time you like go to the gym, you don't actually get bigger. You 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 create a deficit. You get smaller because you you've, you've lost weight, you've lost water, you've lost nutrients. And then when you eat and recover, you go back above baseline, right? But you have to go back above baseline to make gains because if you just keep going down, you keep destroying yourself basically. And like, you only hit baseline at a certain you, point. You, you, so you could even go backwards. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I've done that. You know, training too much that you... So you get injured. It's not even... you get Even if you don't get injured, you're just burning so much and you're using so much that you can't recover. The quality of work you're doing diminishes. And it, you, it's, just, it's just not as beneficial. That's I, how I felt this week, you motherfucker. Well, you never deload. Well, no shit. Bro was just hating on deloads. I don't deload. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is, bro, like, you... you like, I'll take two. Like, fucking, when we got back from Houston, I took three days of rest in a row. You were like, yeah. I, I can't do three days. <clears throat> there's some there's some days I'll do. I did two. Yeah, but, bro, Which like. good. You get, I mean, traveling, like, we trained four days in a row. We usually don't do that. Like, two, like, we trained hard. That's why I fucking yacked on that, legs that, that day, That's bro. a way to deload, too, in a way. Just take three days of rest or, yeah, like, I mean, four days of rest. Yeah, well, you could lower your frequency, too. That's another way. There's not one way to deload. It's basically just do less. Yeah. Like, last week, I did 10 sets of five with 375 on bench. That was my first exercise. And this upcoming week's a deload week, and I'm only going to do, like, two sets of five. It's going to be the same weight, same number of reps, but, like... Again, letting the excitement build. By the time I take three days off the gym or, like, if I do a deload week, I'll do, like, really light week of training. Again, probably, like, 45% of my usual, like, intensity with, like, 12 to 15 reps instead of six to eight, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll take two days off. Like that Saturday, Sunday, and then I'll start like a, fr- a split fresh. I think a deload is different for everybody because like yeah. I couldn't, I probably couldn't do the shit where you go in the gym and then you just like don't train as hard. So I just, I mean, I, I just can't do that. So like I would probably benefit from just doing like three days three, off, yeah, like a couple of days off, and then going back into it. You Restraint want to is strength, bro. You and and like I know it sucks to go in and do workouts that aren't all time PRs and to get better, but and it, like everyone looks at me it's like, how do you get strong fast? It's not a thing. I, I've done. I had a client the other day, and he had like the same workout two weeks in a row, and he was so confused. He's like, am I going to make progress doing this? It's like, do you have any clue how many times I benched three fifteen for a five by five? Like the same workout. To I'm after, stuck at three fifteen five by five. How many times have you benched? Or let's say two seventy five for a five by five. A lot. 
like you, you did the same workout numerous fucking times, right? Yeah. You can make That's progress how you get doing strong. the same thing over and over and over. Like it's not like it doesn't have to be different. It doesn't. I mean, are you you get more strong because you're fucking used to the movement and you're not switching up movements. All that, that, that's usually how I go about it too. I don't like changing exercises for about like eight to twelve weeks for people. Well, that one week I benched with you, you were like, you're like, hey, like, don't go to like two reps past failure every single week. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like you don't need to do that. That's probably why I get stuck at three fifteen five by five because I get to five clean and then I'll go for six or seven with and, assisted and reps. Then you, then you destroy yourself, and then the next week you're fatigued. I'm just, yeah. And then the next week you're fatigued, and then the next week you're, you're fatigued. fatigued. And not you hitting baseline and not recovering. Yep. And but and it's not like you can't. I'm not saying to never go past failure, but it's like let's say you you build up to that, and then you take like a, a deload week. Like like usually it would be like week one is kind of hard, week two a little harder. Week three, please God help me. Yeah. Week four, oh, fuck deload, mm-hmm. and then that kind of just repeats, mm-hmm. and that also that it, it kind of builds to it all builds towards that like third week for me really, and for bodybuilding, I I don't know. I feel like if your goal was gaining mass, I think deloading would be more important every than, six weeks, probably something like pro- that. Probably even more often than that compared to if you were trying to lose weight. Like prep, you ain't deloading, bro. No, not really. No. Yeah, no. I mean, maybe towards the very end. A deload would be yourself. like just doing pump work. Yeah. Right. But and you're going to the gym. Yeah. But well, the volume has to be low, anyways, just because the amount of calories you're trying to match. Well, but motherfuckers still, like, that don't could, train their training during prep get hurt. Well, you could also like uh, Standard Ferdinand has an argument about this because he's had a lot of like clients come to him and it's like, so I need to eat less to lose weight. It's like let's just increase your activity. You don't have to sit there and do cardio That's, endlessly. Well, dude, you could lift weights more. Like how I was talking about how like it was I was like. More going, time too. Yeah. Let's like, not prep for sixteen weeks. Let's prep for twenty and start with more food. And, and be able and to try to be able if to you preserve can, it. Yeah, more. if you can eat more food and have more food, it's more sustainable. Start, yeah, no shit, bro. Mm-hmm. People just undervalue. Just well, everyone wants to do a twelve week prep. <laughs> like, They'll come to tripping. me. It's like, like I'm ready to do a meet, and I know people do go to bodybuilding coaches. Like, I'm ready to do a show. It's like you have no muscle on you. You you have trained for two months. You think in 12 weeks I can save you? I could have all the knowledge that God has and I couldn't save you. You know what I mean? Like, like you're good. There's, good, there's something called time and like bodybuilding, powerlifting, it, it requires it. It takes five to 10 years to, yeah, build, I, to build a really, really, really a, a good really, base. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm 11 and years And not even deep. like a legendary physique. I'm talking like to build your good foundation mm-hmm. to where you could say, oh, now I, re- I really have something. Because mm-hmm. I think even people like, Social media skews it, bro. Like some of these influencers get washed when they go to competitions because, dude, they people, don't have the filters. Well, you can't, no, you can't see density on mm. fucking camera, like mm. grainy density, muscle mass, like having fascia on fascia, where it's like, holy fuck, that dude's chest striations have fucking striations, like that shit's dumb. You yeah, know what I mean? So, so social media makes things seem real that aren't real. Yeah. There's a lot like, of kids that can, like, do a lot of crazy shit in the gym and can't come anything close to it in the I, gym. I, I would same. get washed, and I'm pretty large at 207 pounds. I talk, I would talk to Goob. I was like, where are we really at? He was like, if you do a prep now, if we prep for, like, if we did one quick bulk and then tried to prep for, like, 20, 22 weeks, you'd probably get, like, third or fourth place. Hmm. And that's just very honest. He's like, why don't we just do another year of, like, Building. getting big as fuck? And then going into a prep where we know, mm-hmm. like, dude, I'm at least going to give somebody a run for their money or that shit's mine. Right. Like you want to go into it very honest with yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm not going to prep to do a show to get told, put on more weight. When yeah. I already know you need to put on, more I need weight. to put on more you weight. Just simply do it. Just be it. honest. Don't yeah. waste your time cutting down to something that you haven't built yet. That exactly. You need, that you need to have built. Exactly. Yeah, it takes it takes numerous years and gaining. But people ask me, it's like, so when are you going two seventy five? I'm like, dude, I, I I saw two fifty at night in meat prep. I was waking up two forty two. That's that's the weight class. Gaining another thirty pounds is not something you can just. Once you get like, to a certain point, too, tissue becomes harder to gain because it's like micro tissues that you're packing mm-hmm. on. So, like at your at your point, because you're eleven years into training, putting on five pounds of tissue is fucking. Mm-hmm. Like it, really lean, good, bro. Mu- lean muscle, muscle tissue, yeah, bro. That's yeah. Fu- to put on five pounds of actual, so- like contractile tissue. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That pushes weight. That's good. Do you know right? who Ben Pollock is? Yeah, PH deadlift or whatever. Yeah, dude. He he, he, he did sw- your nutrition, right? He, he he was trying to help me with it. We we haven't quite kicked that off yet, mainly due to my my negligence. But he had some transformation, bro, and it was like. He started bodybuilding. I think he put like fifty pounds of stage weight on in like a year That's or crazy. something. That's 
that's funny. They, 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 like they, they, they say his hands grew, his feet grew. It, it was GH it was, probably helped with that a little bit. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what his approach to all that was, but it was, it was probably one of the freakiest transformations. How do you get your bench press weight up? This my is a answer, good one for my you. My answer, simple answer: you put more weight on the bar and you lift it, and then you bench more. I feel like it's. I think there's like a simple. Well, not simpler. I think like Dawson's gonna Dawson's be like a got pretty it. simple answer too. You, you would build up. His I would say doing trip like easy triples and singles and building up. Like I, I just push hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just take it and I just push, push stick hard. It's very simple. Um, th- 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 that but like all right, you want to bench press if you if you're benching once a week, maybe try twice a week. If you're benching twice a week and you stop making progress, maybe try three times a week. But then it gets to a certain point, more is not always better. Some people can have even pushed four to five times a week. I think it's a bit much. I, I think you can overreach it. Um, so I would just pretty much like, all right, if you suck at shoulder press, like me, I, I was overhead pressing like 225 standing for like two reps when I could like bench 500 pounds for the first time. My shoulders were terribly weak in comparison to like my chest, my triceps. So it's like, okay, let me train my shoulders. And then, you know, I could start bopping around 5.30 after I, like, worked on that. It's like, okay, my triceps were kind of weak. I kind of, like, I'm very, like, I got, I got like, a big chest. JM big press. Back. JM press. Yep. A lot, a lot of skull crushers, a lot of French press. Pretty much I just, like, what do you suck at? Well, what, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, because I, I have a lot of things I suck at. That's why I program those plat squats. Exactly. So if you just, like, pretty much attack those, and it's like, and it's like I, a lot of people, like, I was talking to Brett, and he's like, oh, I don't want to bench press anymore. I'm trying to, like, I have a plateau. I'm trying to get past it. So I'm going to do dumbbell presses for a while. It's like, how are you going to get better at benching doing dumbbell press? You don't get better at playing the guitar by playing the drums. And, well, like, it's like if you, like, put, say you put, like, 30 to 40 pounds on your dumbbell press and you go back to benching, like your yeah, your bench will be stronger, but like it's it's a lot easier for barbells. You can just kind of fucking put a two and a half on. Those are like some of the heaviest weights. micro progressions, or yeah. even the micro plates we have. It, I, if I, you could if put on point two, like yeah, especially if you're pounds. a female and you're like a smaller Fuck. guy. Because, but if if you're trying someone, to say. Okay. Uh, not, not you, but I'm just. <laughs> I'm well, if, if we you. talk about like a female, if we talk about like five percent of her bench, you know, like say she benches 135 pounds, that's five, what, what would five percent of that be? That'd be like eight pounds, something, so seven and a half. That's that's a, that's a large percent. But like for me, like five pounds of five hundred is. So it, I don't think it makes as much of a of a difference as all I'm saying. I wasn't trying yeah. to be, like belittle. No, anyway. no, I'm just I'm oh. just fucking with you because it was funny because I said that and you were like, yeah, if you're like a female, yeah, or like a <laughs> smaller, smaller, a smaller guy, a smaller man, a like. smaller man. For, or like for like overhead press or curls, I think micro loading might make more sense, but. Um, in terms of bench, all right, put put thirty pounds on your barbell curl, put thirty pounds on your skull crusher, and like don't sacrifice form to do that. Put sixty pounds on your row, your horizontal row of choice, barbell row, dumbbell row, cable row, whatever. Get good at a vertical pulling. If you can't do pull ups, get good at pull ups. If not, do lat pull downs. Um, vertical pushing, do dips. Do push ups. Do bench. Pretty much do everything to get train your forearms. Get a very jacked upper body. Like look at Wayne. Why does he bench so much? He's he's fucking three hundred pounds. He of can muscle. also row five plates on the plate and, and row for he, reps. He, he, with like, ease. he was doing incline dumbbell press with two hundred pound dumbbells. You know, he's, he's he's he was doing skull crushers with like three plates on each side. He he trained everything around his upper body and made it stronger. And he trained it with intensity. And you know, he wasn't like get, he he goes in there and he trains bench pretty heavy all the time. But he's not like maxing out all the time either. You know, no, he does and, he does Larson press a lot with the, feet up bench, yeah. a lot of reps. You know, crazy ladders. And I just want to say this because I think a lot of people want, like, a big bench. But I always say, like, you got to figure out what your, like, end goal is or, like, what your – what do you – why do you want, like, a, a better fucking bench press? Because I think in terms of, like, bodybuilding purposes, like, I remember when I first started lifting, like, I wanted to bench a lot because it was just, like, first people fucking – first thing people ask when they see you is how what much do you bench? bench. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I realized that when I when I dropped my ego – and I didn't really give a fuck how much I benched. It was when I made the most progress in my chest and, like, mm. my physique in general was when I stopped, like, worrying about how much I benched. Now, if you're, like, a power lifter or power builder and you just want to get strong and that's why you want a big bench, then that's, like, valid reason to have, like, a... I don't know anybody that reps four plates for reps on an incline bench or a flat bench that has a small chest, though. I know plenty of dudes that do it on a flat bench that have a small chest that they have, like, a super exaggerated arch. Well, that's different. Arms. I'm saying yeah, if you can rep like four plates for full raw. range of motion, yeah. bro, like for s- five to six you're, reps, bro. You're going to be a unit. You're yeah, gonna be bro. A unit. You're, like, but look at John Effer. He 
benches all the time. Like, dude, I'm just like at a certain point, it gets to a point where it's like doesn't really matter the exercise, right? Like, you're it's saying, more the intensity. Wait, I was about to say it's not. Well, what I'm trying to say it's not even about like the benching itself. It's more just like the purpose behind it because I think a lot of people want like a bigger bench just to say that they bench a bigger number to impress other people. Mm. And I think if that's the reason that you want like a better bench, then it's like. I think you're doing it for, like, the wrong reasons in a way. Like, if you're a bodybuilder, then why the fuck does it matter what this person thinks of your bench, right? Mm -hmm. When all that matters is your your fucking physique, right? It's also what you enjoy, right? So, like, I I started doing the bench because I was getting bored with dumbbells, bro. I, I, you know, I that, wanted to get that, stronger. That, that's exactly that's my perspective on both of y'all. It's like if you if you don't like bench press and you enjoy doing dumbbell press or dips or a machine press instead, and you're going to the gym and you're being active, that that's fucking amazing. Now, if you enjoy bench press and you just think it's a chat exercise, you know, put three plates on, regardless of what reason you're doing it, and something you want to do, Chad. You know, it's it's more so like the same thing. I was the perspective I was talking about earlier, where like majority of people don't exercise. If if you go to the gym and you enjoy your workout and you're consistently going, I I don't I don't give too much of a shit what you do. Now I might have my opinion of being like, hey, you should back squat. Hey, you should do you should do hard things. Like I want to I want to push people. I want to make them uncomfortable. That's kind of just like my job, my life. But like. I I don't know. Like how, like I think everyone should do squats, but fucking Dorian Yates didn't. You know, I don't think he did flat hack bench squat. much either. Yeah, I mean, incline bench, hack squat, side X leg press. Yeah, he he didn't fuck with squats. So, you know, so there's people. He that did have, do the he did deadlift though. He did the three quarter partial. They were deadlifts, only Romanians though. though. He wasn't pulling from the floor. Yeah, but three quarter partial deadlifts mm-hmm. are not fun. They're not fun, but it's not it's not a normal deadlift. Yeah, I don't feel like it has much stress on the back because you're not going as low. That's basically. very true. But, but, I mean, it's for, for hamstring, lower back development, all that bodybuilding purpose. It seemed like he'd built the best back in bodybuilding. So. But, again, he could also incline dumbbell mm-hmm. press, like 240-pound dumbbells. Then you, then you have Ronnie Coleman in his work gloves, T-bar rowing eight plates, deadlifting 800, you know. Like, I, at a certain point, it's like, I mean, you, you, you have to go pretty pretty heavy and take risk if you're trying to do some, some shit against people that are going heavy and taking well, risks. Yeah, you know, again, just, Dorian could rep four plates on incline bench for eight reps. I, c- I couldn't do that. That's fucking hard, that, that's bro. That's godly strong. Yeah, like, and bro, like... They're like 270, he, And he's not, he's not, like... That fucker would be, like... Controlled. Blowing it up, yeah. Yeah, like, eight reps. I'm like, okay, hmm. That's fucking hard. Like... Well, you look at them all. They all do, like, different shit. Like, all the dudes that were, like, the fucking craziest the golden physiques eras. ever. Yeah, they all, like... They all had their own approach, yeah. and they figured it out for themselves. And that's that's the difference from that in today's society. Because now everyone... I have my tutorials. I have my programs. You have your programs. A lot of people have their programs. Everyone has their own way to do it. And everyone's trying to learn from all these other people. And I, I, I kind of trying to learn from other people as well. I'm not saying that's bad. But there, there was beauty... Like, when I first started training and before social media was as big of a thing, and I, I, mean, I told you I was 14 years old, I had, like, an Arnold Encyclopedia. And that, that, was, that was my fucking Bible. It was like, hey, go do 100 pull-ups, to try this. And there was, like, so many unorthodox exercises from the 30s or 40s. <laughs> and it's pretty much like, hey, we don't know what actually works, but find what works for you. And that's what those motherfuckers did because they didn't have science. They didn't have textbooks. They, they would go to the grocery store and they'd get a magazine that sold them fucking lies. It's like, hey, if you take protein powder, you'll like Jay Cutler. So what they had to do is figure it the fuck out for themselves. And that's why they found their own approach. And if you look at, like, let's say any other field, we look at every musician. Like, I mean, a lot of them, a lot of songs can kind of get poppy and bullshit general. But, like, majority of people that, like, made it to the top, they kind of had their own thing, their own approach. There, isn't, there wasn't, like, something, like, set in stone on, like, a one-way it's even like social media, like yeah. Success, yeah. Because like, like some people can just be cringe as fuck. Well, you gotta be you. Somehow. Yeah, gotta be you. That's it. So, I train the way I want to train. At the end of the day, and it's 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 kind of like like you should just look like they used to just look in the mirror. It's like arms are small compared to my chest. I want big arms, so that you know, just their program, and that's how they trained. It was just in in more by intuition than like what someone told them. And like Tom Platt, so everyone was like, he he was doing sissy squats on the fucking. Hack. hack squat and then you do the reverse nordics and everyone's like why are you doing that he's like ah i don't really know these are just exercises i've i found that work for me it wasn't like oh everyone should do this exercise is the greatest exercise ever this is why my quads are the best he didn't he didn't even fucking know what he was doing i don't feel you know i, I like I, I feel like a lot of us don't but it was just like hey this is this is what i found that works for me and you know you ever see the clip of uh jay cutler i think it's fucking bullshit he goes I've never done a set to failure, or I've never I never trained to failure. You see that clip? You know what I'm talking that's about? That's that's a lot of shit. 
Uh, dude, I watched him incline bench four plates and have spotters helping him do assisted yeah. reps before. So yeah, that's he's what I'm definitely. F- I, that's why I'm pretty, pretty sure shit. he said that in a fucking clip. But he's like, I've never done one set to failure. Ronnie Coleman also said that he was like zero percent body fat on Joe Rogan. <laughs> you know, a lot of people say a lot of silly things. I don't he also know. said he was just running tests and D ball. <laughs> the 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 good old <laughs> basics. Just the basic though. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about all that, bro. But like, you, you can, you can go watch the videos and see he trained like a fucking animal. Grant, I think he's probably just trying to like get people to avoid being on steroids. Ronnie yeah. Coleman, where like they're crippled and shit. And it's like, hey, you don't have to absolutely destroy yourself. Like, you could probably just do higher reps, more volume, shorter rest periods. There, there's some truth to that. But like, I don't, I don't know. I think Ronnie Coleman's more legendary than Jay Cutler for sure. For personally, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's like, uh, it's Jay, Ronnie, bro. Jay, Jay, how many Olympias did Jay win? Four? I think five. No, four. He's four I, I, time. He's four time. Ronnie's five. Eight, no, eight. 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 Damn. Ronnie's Excuse eight, bro. Me. Excuse Ronnie's me, eight. Ronnie. I'm so sorry. Aust- Arnold's the Austrian Oak at seven. Hmm. Um, For classic though, right? Well, that's that, that was, was that was bodybuilding that was body back, back, the back then. So it's that, not bodybuilding yeah, that now, matter. but that, um, that that's what that's what bodybuilding should always be. Really, fucking. I love what they're doing now. Oh, with, with like, the three classes. Yeah, I love what they're doing. Even though it has brought a lot of more people in the sport, I'm not a big a fan of men's physique. But like three classes, it's men's a good physique, start. Classic physique, bodybuilding. Isn't there like two twelve and shit? Or those? Oh, like four classes. Bodybuilding. Four yeah. classes. Well, two twelve is like bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, but for short dudes, it's because like. It's hard to judge. Like you could say, I would say Franco Colombo had a better physique than Arnold, mm-hmm. but Arnold was taller, so he just looked way bigger. Who was that black dude in uh, Pumping Iron? I thought he was had like one of the best physique. They, there, they bro. talk about him. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I just am forgetting his name. One of my favorite physiques is Mike Mincer. Mike Mincer had a great physique yeah, too. Him, him and Dorian Yates trained the exact same way. Yeah. That was the what good one. What was that? What was the question there? Those the bench press, bench wasn't press. it? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it out. Uh, well, we, we can end on this one. Bet. Um, advice for somebody fairly new wanting to start recording gym progress at the gym. Ben, you preach this all the time. Just use your phone. That's the number one. I think people think you gotta get closer to the mic. This one thing. Th- this kid bought a, a camera. They bought a the, what's a, a fucking seven. And yep. he, he's like, he just bought a phone. camera. I was like. I was Ooh. like, you ever think about getting using your phone? He goes, yeah, but it looks nice for a camera. Well, <laughs> well, it does. At, at, at Sky Fitness. Uh, well, it does. All, I mean, it does look big. nicer, bro. Like, why are you spending all that money for, like, something? It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter. Just it, record content. Yeah, Just record well, content that's and post. Getting, that's what I'm getting to. Like, post. Like, why are you overthinking it with a camera and production value when you should just post the content with what you have in front of your disposal? Well, if he wants stuff. to get a camera, like, all power to him because it will help. Like, down the road, he's going to eventually want to get one if it's successful. But Maybe. Like, At the same time, I built a business with an iPhone 4 leaning against a water bottle. Yeah. So it's, it's not necessarily what you have. It's what you do for it. It's yeah, not necessarily about your resources versus being resourceful. Again, just But post. if you have the resource to, and you, you're actually using it to be resourceful, like, go for it. You just know, post. Yeah, but, but like, you can't think too much about it. It's like, oh, well, what kind of content do I want to put, put out? Whatever you want. Like, I don't really think too much about it. I like posting my heavy lifts because I like lifting heavy. It's, yeah. it's that simple. I you think know? everyone everyone has a little bit of imposter syndrome, and we all deal with it from time to time. It's just like once you first make do those first few posts, you get over it, and then you start to find who, what you want to talk about, what you want to say, who you want to portray. Like, your personality will come out. Don't try to be someone else like you're not. Be you, like you say this all the time, be you, post, and you'll get out of your own way. And you'll figure it out as you do it. Because if you don't do it and contemplate it, you'll never do it. And you're always going to be like, Ooh, like, you know. I limbo. encourage all of you to scroll down on my Instagram as far as you can and just scroll back up and just look, bro. Look, <laughs> I fucking, the shittiest quality pictures you've ever seen of my phone posted up, screenshotted from a video in the fucking, in the old gym I used to go to of me hitting the, the weirdest fucking poses that, that don't even make any sense, and I look back and I'm, I cringe at them, but I keep them there just to see, like, the progression of, like, how far I've came. I started with my phone. I got, a like, a $500 camera when I was I, – I didn't make money on social media, but I was I was working and shit. Bought that shit. Then I got another one, a better one, upgraded. I think it was also 500 but it was better because it was used. I got it from someone else that also posted and shit. And then I started making money, and then I bought the – the the big Johnny right there. <laughs> that shit's nice. I love it. Sony A7 III. But it's like you got to work your way up because it's like you're going to see the potential whether you have a fucking 
$5,000 camera or your phone. There's people that still use their fucking phone, and all they do is talk to it. And if they Shout say some Gabe shit Guinness. that's that's funny, that's me. Shout out, Gabe. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You could, if you fucking use your phone camera, it's, it's usually not really about the quality of the fucking video. It's just about what the the quality and what you're providing in the video. I thought Gabe recorded with camera. Mm -mm. I did too. Well, yeah. I'm really? just I'm I'm just saying you can tell by the way he at least edits the content. It's mm. nice, so you don't need the camera. Just post. And a lot of times his videos are just, like, funny. And, like, they're skits of him just holding his phone in front of his face or saying the shit, like, that soft hand shit. Yeah, like, he you got soft hands, he boy. He didn't set up a fucking $10,000 setup in front of him and film that shit. And then, like, yo, this is going to go viral because it's, like, I got this high-quality-ass fucking camera and shit. It's, like, no, like, this shit was funny on my phone, and it went viral. Like, I, even I post those stupid-ass fucking stories. <laughs> Head came clean off. If you know, you know. You probably the, haven't seen the it. Last the, how, how so like you, the last one was funny. How do you post? Figure it out. Whatever the fuck you want, they'll, so, they'll either support you or unfollow you. Yeah. And if, if they unfollow you, then why do you care so much? Like, yeah. so some people will eventually come along and fuck with you. Like, you'll find your tribe, you'll find people in the community that, like, you know, want to want to support you and follow along. Like, comment on people, interact with people, you know, that they'll make them want to comment, interact with you. And, Simply kind of just becoming like a person of the, in the online community. Mm -hmm. And I always say this shit. I always say this shit, but like there's like thousands, tens of thousands of people trying to do the fitness influencer shit and post their progress in the gym. So if you do the same thing as everybody else, you look to other people's content for like, uh, not like inspire like you directly copy it. Like there's a lot of people that copy each other's shit. Plagiarism. It's, it's just so fucking obvious that you guys are just copying word for word. Well, other people are saying putting you hitting some fucking bicep curls with the fucking exposure. You can't even fucking see your face and shit in black and white with the full fucking quote on the screen. Copied word for word for somebody else. Like, there's, you see it like there's 30 of the same fucking videos on TikTok. I don't know if you're on TikTok like that, but you see like they're fucking it's the same shit. People say the same shit. And it's like, what the fuck? What are you providing? You're, you're just copying other people, right? So, like, my biggest thing is find a way to stand out, like, as best as you can. And that's going to take a lot of experimenting. And it takes time. Like, Trial it, it and took error. me, like, two years until I could, like, find something that made me stand out from everybody else, which eventually made me kind of, like, take off or whatever the fuck you want to You're going to enjoy let's, posting, let's though. The, oh, yeah. Stop the, let's stop them. She left, bro. Like, three-second oh, like clip. The fucking, fucking black oh, and dude. white post. Motherfuckers have whole pages. <laughs> About that shit. Uh, those those kind of cringe me out because like they're no those kids shit, are young, bro. They're young too, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I, I'm, whole not, life? I'm not gonna name drop, but there was one kid that posted shit like that all the time, like black and white, all sad with his hoodie on, and then bro would get on like Instagram Live and was like a completely different person, like was just like cocky and like so out of pocket and i was like what the fuck is going on bro <laughs> she left it's okay don't don't keep your head up King. it's like bro you're like, literally go to the gym you're just hopping on a fucking trend and like not being yourself whatsoever just to get some fucking Ugh, views and shit and make people like feel bad for you or whatever the fuck i don't know just find a way to stand out be different make different content because that's ultimately what's going to set you apart from everybody else who's just going to Lead more people to your page and actually want to follow you and like fuck with you. Figure it out. Figure it, it out. It took a lot. It took a long time for me to get traction before people started fucking with me. Yeah. Three years but it, for it, me. It, but as soon as like I got that traction, it became like kind of kind of cool to fuck with me, buy my programs, work with me as a coach or whatever. You know, it, it changed. It was no longer like hard. But getting that initial traction is the hardest thing. And it's like I posted for I had my Instagram so I was like like fifteen. If you scroll and you fucking look, you'll see a little cringy ass Dawson. Forty, thirty likes for numerous years. I didn't give a shit. I don't even know how many years it was, but it was it was it was a fair amount. I probably started didn't start getting followers for like three, four years. And I, I didn't even really care. It was like, hey, here's just here look at my shitty little turkey burgers. Here's my journey, let me document it. Hey, here's me doing a cringy ass pose. I'm happy with the progress I'm making. And I would say most people that have like made it or are like doing well now you can scroll down on their instagram you're going to see the same thing from everybody else from when they first started posting if they didn't delete it but most of them have been posting for a long time you don't just start fucking posting i mean sometimes probably people get lucky and shit but you don't just start posting and then just automatically fucking build a huge following and just a community it's just yeah. it's not how it works especially it if you time. want like 
Especially if you want to be like organic and people actually stick around and last. Like yeah. you, you, kind of, you have to kind of gain it more organically. And, and then figure it out. expectations are too high. Everyone has this expectation as soon as they post. That's a problem I've dealt with. I think a lot of people deal with, especially when you're trying to do this for like income, is you're expecting like some sort of like response, and it's like you shouldn't expect that at all until like two, three years. You know, well, I don't even think you should really do it for the income. I, that's what, that was my like, thought process. Well, yeah. it, you, the income kind of came as a byproduct exactly. of me doing something I wanted to do, and I then like because I did it, and I so passionately I talked about it so much, people were wanted to follow along, and that gave me a platform to make income. Right. But it's not like when I wasn't like, I, at no point was I ever posting and I was like, oh, I'm going to get this sponsor. I'm going to get this paycheck. Like it was more so just like, I like to see wait there. Fuck with it the whole time. What do you think is going to happen? Bro? I just, I just didn't think that was going <laughs> to happen. Bro, destroyed it. It still works a little better. No, it works a little better. Bro, whatever. The income just well, comes, bro. You, like if you, you, like I wouldn't be like sitting around betting on social media to pay all your bills, but like work on it while you have like and like a lot of people I know it's like if they have like a normal job and then they start to make money off social media, they'll wait till it's like matches their normal job and then they'll like cut off or drop back their hours or something like that and then make it their full time. You know? But like I was working in the kitchen when I started posting. You were working in the kitchen? Yeah, I was a cook. Everybody knows my story. Yeah, I was a cook, was and then I just Horn. started working in a gym because I, I wanted to be a personal story. trainer. He was working at Longhorn. I was working at Longhorn, but that wasn't really like – that was when I moved to South Carolina. Like kind of – I think I started working there 2021, May, and I quit 2022, February, like nine months I was there, some shit like that. I, I was know. a server too. Yeah, I was I – was, like, they didn't even make me a server. They told me that like the, within the three first three months I would become like a server, straight capped. I was fucking, I was like a hostess because you had to like work your way up or whatever. They had enough servers. I was a hostess and then I was a to-go server and then I was about to be a server. They kept telling me, kept telling me I was going to be a server. And at this point I'm starting to make money. So I was like, all right, bro, like y'all are, I, and I fucking work hard in like anything I, that I do. And I can fucking say that with confidence. And I was in there fucking working harder than like any motherfucker in there. And I definitely deserved that spot and they just weren't giving it to me. So I, I kind of almost felt like disrespected also. I never really talked about this either, but like then I was also making money. So I was kind of like, all right, well, I'm out because fuck yeah, this I, shit. I, I quit my job as a server before I was even making money. I hated it so much just having other people who like boss me around and shit. Oh. I was like, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. I did, bro. Figure it out. No, but in that question, it was like, uh, this is also, we'll probably end on this too. Uh, Wanting to post, like, recording progress at the gym. I think a lot of people, like, they look for, like, the next big thing. Or, like, they run out of ideas with their content and shit. And what I've realized with what I do is, like, the best things that come out of my content is what I'm just documenting. Instead of trying to create some crazy-ass shit. Like, you see Jesse James West. He's always searching for the next, like, viral video. You know what I'm saying? And, like, yeah, that's going to get you, like, a lot of views and shit. But, like, I would argue, like... There's probably people that have more followers than me, but don't have, like, as a tight-knit fucking community of people that, like, will ride for me because of how much I put myself out there and how much I can, like, uh, I don't I feel like I relate to my audience a lot just because of how much I document my, my day-to-day. Like, I film every single day, and I kind of just, I'm very just open about everything. They relate to you, bro. Yeah, exactly. And when you go, you go fucking viral all the time, you get all these views and shit, but, like, you don't really show who you are. Like, day to day, like, people don't really relate to that shit. Gang. So, uh, I would say, uh, Gary V said this shit, but document, not, not create. create. You know what I'm saying? Hold you you, end you on that capture shit. moments. You don't try to create them. Exactly. Just fucking always. I love Gary V, bro. I, I read his book when I was, like, 18. That's what's in, like got me to start my business then. He's the man. Garage sales? Oh, no, I can't hear. Am I, am I still on? If you got this far... Comment Gary V. Comment Gary V. Shout out mm. Gary V. Mm. Gary V. Will be on the pod soon. Actually, he's, he's actually uh, <laughs> he reached no. out to us. <laughs> oh shit! All, all right, right, boys. Thank yeah. y'all for having me, it's boys. Chicken rice pod. Code chicken on Helamix. Not code optimal. Code this, optimal on Helamix. This is the chicken rice pod, not the optimal pod. Okay, so <laughs> use code chicken Helamix. Young LA optimal on uh, chicken rice. All that. Code Dawson on chicken rice. <laughs> we out. Peace. Peace.